CYC is a free channel presents the Word of God for everyone. Your support will help us to continue the mission. Visit our website, cycnow.com. Even a dollar will make a difference. Uh, the Coptic medical or caregivers. We started as medical only, although we are asked now to accept some physical therapists and nurses and dentists, and maybe in the future nurses. However, there is an advisory board, and this advisory board are all physicians, and there is a physician coming from each region of the country. So there is one from Northeast, one from uh, Midwest, one from California, one from South, Canada. We just start making some alliance with people in Norway and Denmark and, of course, Egypt. So it's really exploding. The idea is really exploding, and it's limitless. The objectives are limitless. I'll tell you what our initial humble expectations and what we are in now and Dr. George will fill you in with some more ideas. When we started this, we said, there is a lot of us are very accomplished doctors, but we don't know each other. So the first objective, can we get to know each other? The second objective is, okay, we are very accomplished, each one in his own category, but sometimes I get a consult in surgical oncology and I don't know anyone, so now I know Dr. Nader Hanna and I can send them to surgical oncology, or I know I need a pathologist, and we didn't know who is the pathologist. So the second thing is really all the international consultations, which 97% come from Egypt. We start to get many from the Middle Eastern countries like Kuwait and Dubai. Those are Christians who happen to live in other countries, and they still trust the Christian medical doctors who probably got their training elsewhere. So they send us a full report about their case and they need an ophthalmology consult, um, a pediatric surgery consult. Not necessarily that the person has to come to the States to be treated because we don't have a lot of resources yet. However, the idea of consultations was one second objective. So the first objective is really fellowship, interaction, knowing each other. The second is how to help those who need medical opinions. And even the Pope himself now is looking into taking Semana and making Semana a formal sort of body that there is another body in Egypt sort of triage all the cases. They send to one person here who has all the names and specialties of Semana physicians and sort of send the case to a specialist. We take his response, send it back to the, our representative in Egypt, and actually we, we are planning to open it not just to Christians, to all Muslims, to all Egypt. And of course, the Pope is so interested in this because he thinks that this is one of the ways that Copts are so, um, they don't discriminate between whom to care for. So I told you about two objectives. The third objective came about, and George is the best to talk about, is the medic, are the medical missions. Um, I know David went with us before. Um, many of you are planning to come with us. We have uh, a medical mission going off in two weeks from now, actually, to Ethiopia. But medical missions now are the big part of Semana. And I must say, um, it really revived our youthfulness, because now we feel uh, we can go out to places, we can see really, really much need to people who are in uh, dire need of medical help. And you can't imagine even our American colleagues coming with us. Canadian thoracic surgeon was going off. Um, uh, I believe there was an Australian neurosurgeon was going one time. So the idea is even attracting non Coptic medical caregivers, because the idea of giving is part of 
the physician's soul. I mean, any one of you hopefully did not go into that um, discipline um, only for the glamour of it, but the giving of it. And because of that, Semana is attracting people who want to give to those who are in great need. And uh, medical missions, I'll leave more to George to speak of. Then the fourth came the idea of, can we do collaboration in ideas like, I have a research project, and Andrew wants to do, say, genomic um, research in lung cancer. And it happens that I have this. And he really need, he likes that part, and it's going to help him in his career. So we put a list of research projects that our physicians have an access to. It doesn't have to be paid, maybe paid, but a lot of times it's not. But um, people who like Nader also, he may be speaking later about opportunities, how to get medical students or even residents to help or to participate to improve their career. The next objective that we had is the objective which we did not really do good in, with all respect, is how to help people especially foreign grads to get residency. We, we were more helpful lately with the numbers becoming, the competition is in the 230 uh, USMLE one, and the numbers are becoming so high to the extent that non-American grads, although we try to help, it's not like we are closing the door, but our help is a bit limited nowadays. That doesn't mean we are not going to extend our help, but we will try. But this is an objective I cannot say we fulfilled it. Um, the next objective is really the objective of um, medical conferences. We have not done much in it, and um, this is where we can collaborate with radio pharma pharmaceutical companies and so forth. Now, the student chapter, which uh, Dr. George, I must say, I uh, raise my ha uh, hat for him because he really started this because you guys want to do it. And now we are looking at you as our um, engine, our heart. You guys are going to move Simana to a different level. And I think Mina Merham and George Tadros have done a great work in this. And uh, our presence today is one reflection of how the medical student chapter should really uh, go up. I'll, I'll introduce Dr. George. Dr. George is really a very mobile person. I know how he does it, but he really um, uh, is a, an engine and soul and heart and mind and brain and many other things of Semana. Um, he is uh, the person in charge of the next Ethiopia medical mission, which is going off in two weeks, as I said. Um, but. Apart from that, he collaborates with so many, including medical students, and he is in charge of the medical student chapter. So I would like Dr. George to come and give you Semana, how it's going to work with you guys as medical students. Thank you, Henny, very much for this blessing. Um, to me, it's very much exciting that every time we get to meet, because every time we get to meet, there are new ideas, new faces, new collaborations, new perspectives for what we can do as a Coptic community. I think for me, when I look at, and as I'm going to share with you guys later a little bit when we talk about actually the missions, the passion that came behind this was actually not necessarily that we just want to connect together, but the passion for a lot of us is how can we find God in our daily lives? How can we find God in who we are? Because that is the beauty, and we always talked about this in the previous retreat, about how orthodoxy is incarnational. You don't separate yourself from Christ. It is who you are. You are a physician. You are a pharmacist. You are a dentist. It's who you are. You try to find Christ in who you are. And for us, you know, a lot of us who came from Egypt and practice in Egypt, that connection was a little bit more doable. For some reason, it was more, it was more, it was warmer, okay? There was more opportunities, I would say. There was more people knocking on your door. It's like, I need this help. Here, you're kind of a little bit separated and you're a little bit distant. And also, because over there, you know, we would be able to meet together all the time as a Coptic community, you know, and, and um, as, a, as physicians and pharmacists. Here, everyone is in a different place. And, you know, in this weather and in this atmosphere and in this busy life, we're very disconnected. And that's where Henny kind of, you know, brought this idea. Of, like, the first idea when it came was an idea of connection. Initially, when we thought, and, and you know, I'll tell a little bit more about the missions later, 
But as an idea, initially when we thought it was thought as, you know what, it's just for practicing people. You know what, we're going to try to get professionals together. Um, little that we know that is going to go very, very quickly beyond that to students. And now I think what is even the next wave is non-healthcare professionals who want to serve with us because they see that, you know what, this is a big need, this is an area where people have a lot of desire to be in, and can we help and serve? So right now we're actually trying to think even creatively in Samana, how can we get non-healthcare professionals to join us in the service? Um, for you guys, I think maybe later today, one of the things at the end of the day is this workshop where we got to talk a little bit more about what can you do, okay? Because this is still baby steps. As, as, as Dr. Henny said, we are moving in many different fronts at the same time. But we're starting to learn a little bit where are the areas that need help and where are the areas that people want to work in. Okay? From the last meeting we had in December, we've already formed several committees that medical students can get involved in, as well as pharmacists, as well as residents. Um, some of them are involved with logistics. Some of them are involved with uh, marketing and advertising and networking. Some of them are involved with missions. Okay? Some of them are involved with spiritual work okay, within the area of the medical missions. So honestly, one of the things I always tell students, yes, you know, Henny is the president of this organization. I sit on the board. But honestly, this is your organization. Because very, very quickly, we want you guys to take that leadership in terms of ideas, in terms of creating new areas for services. One of the other areas I always find is like, yeah, we meet a couple of times a year. But back home in your own church, back home in your own local area, collaborate together. You know, I was just, you know, just, we were just having this conversation. Every single church, there is a pod of group of people, whether pharmacists, dentists, healthcare professionals, physicians, students. Collaborate together, get together, do your own group and start something. Um, several, you guys had the health fair uh, in December. Um, and several other churches have come up and started these small health fairs. A lot of them are driven by students. Why? Because you're eager, you're anxious to do something. You know, for us as practicing physicians, like, on my weekend, it's like, you know what, give me a break. <laughs> Don't come and tell me, it's like, what else to do? But for you, you want to do that. And I think you're going to drag us into this because you're going to tell me, it's like, you know what, you're in your practice, at least, you know what, you're getting paid for that, okay? Well, at least come and do something for God. That's true. So... Be the driving force in your churches and in your communities and in your own local networks of what can good we can do in this society. Um, you know, definitely when we look at the American society, when you've got 40 million at the poverty level, there's a lot to be done. We can't really say that this country needs are covered, okay? And yes, we are to be blamed as organizations, as individuals. Why are we looking outside when we should be looking at our backyard? There's a lot of talks right now about the backyard mission. That's very true. Okay? In Egypt, the backyard mission was very, very alive, partly because we saw it every day. Here, we're maybe a bit isolated in where we live and where we practice. But it's very important for us as Samana to be not only the Coptic mission outside the U.S., but also inside the U.S. Okay? So um, to put things into context, the dream is far bigger than what we can even think of. Um, the list of things that have to be done on a practical day-to-day -day basis is humongous, but let's start by baby steps. And I do believe within the last year we've taken several baby steps that have been significant, okay? Number one actually is the formation of the missions committee. Right now, because in the past, everyone just used to come and say, hey, I wanna to go to a mission to Ethiopia, to Bolivia. Now we've got actually a 10-member missions committee that actually decides where missions should go, how they should go. We're trying to be very proactive in the missions in terms of putting out the schedule for next year almost six to eight months in advance, okay? So within your own local community, tell people, okay, the missions, um, the schedule for 2015 is probably gonna be put out by the summer, okay? So people can take vacation and plan ahead, okay? Um, that was the first thing that we had really as a big significant organization last year. The second thing, which was the student chapter, as, as Henny mentioned, and that actually also within the student chapter, they have organized quite a bit in terms of regional leaders and committees that are doing things. Okay, there is a committee for missions, there is a committee for logistics and networking, and there is a committee also for marketing. Okay, people might ask, well, why marketing? Marketing because we need people to know about what we're doing because we need a lot of help. Okay, we cannot cover all the needs. So we need to recruit people to help. And it's not only recruiting just to let them know about it, but to get them involved in working. Okay, uh, trust me, it, there's far more stuff than just letting them know. And honestly, I would tell you, 
Because a lot of people say, well, do you need donations? We do not need donations. We need people to work. Okay? That is the biggest need for us. Um, going forward, there are several ideas coming up, and we can discuss them later, which is that throughout the year, because the missions go throughout the year when, guy, when you guys have school, and you guys can't really get involved in a lot of them. You know, Andrew is a brave soul that he's coming with us, and he's got boards later this year, but he's a brave exception for that. So in the summer, on the flip side, the physicians can't take much vacation, partly because of their practices would not allow them to take more than a week or so. So how can we get more missions with the students um, in the summer? And can we have student-run missions with like a little bit less supervision from physicians? Especially with the sites that we have, let's say in Kenya and Zambia, where we've got already a Coptic hospital. Can we have student-organized missions? There'll be like a lot of primary care missions in that time. So all these ideas are coming up. Um, some other students, which I also would tell you about, are uh, looking into their med schools about how can they get rotations approved in the Coptic hospitals in Africa. I've got a student who's working with me right now from Rush University in Chicago, and he got an approval from his med school to do five-week rotation in the Coptic hospital in Nairobi. It's going to be an approved rotation. So for a lot of you guys, these are things we're going to start. And, and one of the things we're doing with the missions group and the students on the missions group is writing all these in manuals and writing them to have everything documented. So when somebody comes, everything that will be written down as a documented um, process of what you can do. Even for us as an organization, as a, a nonprofit organization, can we get to the point of actually having accredited rotations like that? All this is our dreams because then it's going to allow you in your schools, okay, to use that as a, a potential service, as a potential experience, and a potential leverage. Yes, John. Once the, once the church, the Coptic hospitals are accredited, is it accredited by a national board that would allow other medical schools to also jump in more easier? If it's like they take a lead and they've already accredited it once. Does it have to be accredited again, or is it like a national sort of accreditation process? I don't think it's an accredited as much as an agreement, okay? Because to really go through an accreditation process, it always questions like, accredited by who, okay? So for example, I think medical schools differ from each other, but a lot of the medical schools that have what I've learned, that have the global health rotation, where people actually can even have a master's of global health or a rotation in global health, they allow them to go to certain hospitals with certain requirements. I found, for example, when it comes to residencies, some, some residencies can let you take a month, but you have to be supervised by a board-certified physician in that place, okay? It has to be a board-certified physician. Students are a little bit different, okay? I've seen some med schools allow students to take a rotation outside, and it doesn't have to be a board-certified physician. Because Go ahead. residency is governed by the ECGME, and ECGME have its own rule. You have to have an American board Board, board certified physician, exactly. But the medical schools, every medical school is different. Is different, exactly. Yes. So you have board certified physicians on those trips? On the trips, almost always yes. But when people are going not on those trips, let's say you're taking a month uh, there, because most of these trips are only one week. So if some people are going there for a month, um, these hospitals don't have board certified physicians yet. Okay, they are, they have their other certificates. A lot of them have masters, maybe even a, a PhD degree, but they're not from American uh, sites. So that's where the problem sometimes comes in. So we found a little bit easier with students to do those rotations than residents, okay? But in general, these are ideas we are kind of looking into as an organization to help students get more and more uh, involved, okay? So a lot of that we're going to actually going to find throughout the day a lot of ideas coming up. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, after a little bit, I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Henny to give us kind of the spiritual depth for the day and the uh, spiritual message for the day. And then later, I'm going to do a little bit more of a lighter talk about stories and lessons, what we learned from the missions. It's going to be a ton of stories, so hopefully you guys will be awake by that time. And then we're going to have a great panel um, discussion, okay, where we're going to get Dr. Ned, Dr. Mary, and Henny, myself, and then talk a little bit about ideas and questions that you guys might have um, for, for residency, for choice of uh, uh, practices, uh, for how to balance life, uh, many different questions. And then later on in the day uh, would be with Dr. Uh, sorry, with Dr. Anabuna, David, yes, um, to, uh, to give us even another more spiritual message. And at the very end of the day, we'll have even a, a more time for workshop to kind of nail it down, what can I do? Okay, and if any one of you has specific questions about trips, about um, certain locations and sites, we can answer them at that point. Okay, so that's kind of just an overall view of um, Samana, of where we're at, 
And you're going to find, as I said, throughout the day, more questions coming up. So please you know, interject at any time and, and, uh, and go ahead and ask them. OK? So that being said, you know, Haney, uh, ready to give us the, uh, the good spiritual message. <laughs>